I, Eddard, the House Stork, Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North, sentence you to die. It's an old Stark philosophy that the man who passes the sentence should swing the sword. And it really goes to the root of who Ned Stark is as a man and who the Starks are as a family. You understand why I did it? Oh, where's the old way? The Stark ethos is very much about doing things yourself and about leadership by example. And that is really the, the kind of the cornerstone of, of the first season. He's the center of gravity around whom events move for the most part. The king rides for Winterfell. He's coming this far north. The only one thing he's after. Ned Stark, the Lord of Winterfell, grew up with Robert Baratheon, who went on to become king. They were raised from a relatively early age as brothers for all intents and purposes. And they grew up together and they learned to drink together and chase girls together and they went to war together. You got fat. <laughs> The only reason in the world why Robert would make this journey is because he needs a new hand, and who else would he turn to but his oldest friend, his best friend, his most trusted confidant, Ned Stark. I need you, Ned. You helped me win the Iron Throne, now help me keep the fucking thing. May I present my honored guests, Viserys of House Targaryen, the third of his name, the rightful king of the Andals and the first men, and his sister, Daenerys of House Targaryen. Daenerys Targaryen, whose nickname is Danny, basically went into exile from her homeland when she was so small she doesn't even remember it. She is the, the youngest child of the Mad King, Aerys Targaryen. She's never known her father, she's never known her family, she's never known her homeland. The only thing she's ever known has been her brother. She's been raised by her brother, Viserys, and Viserys has had his eyes on one thing and one thing only, and that is on regaining the throne that was taken from his father. When they write the history of my reign, sweet sister, they will say it began today. And she's had no stability in her life. The only constant has been this brother Viserys. So even though he is a cruel and sadistic older brother, and even though he's really quite abusive to her, it's all she knows. And she's been forced to, if not trust him, at least to follow his wishes, because not doing so would just lead to more abuse. You don't want to wake the dragon, do you? Like a lot of characters in the show, she's looking for an identity and a larger purpose in life. I think there's something deep inside her that's asleep, that's there, that she acknowledges, and you see her start to acknowledge it. Certainly when she's thrown in with the Dothraki and she's presented with the eggs, the dragon eggs, you could see this thought process starting, that there is something larger out there that I'm supposed to be a part of. I think she's on board for going back to the kingdom and to finding out about her culture and to having a home. You, you're Ned Stark's bastard, aren't you? Jon Snow has grown up at Winterfell with the other Starks, but he's not himself a Stark, he's a bastard. So Jon has gone through life at a disadvantage, despite the fact that he's grown up with a noble family and with certain privileges that come with that. He is not one of them. This has, I, I think, understandably caused John to grow up with a chip on his shoulder. Uh, run to the litter. That one's yours, Snow. John doesn't have a future. John will kind of live the rest of his life at the mercy of his brothers. And he has a very strong relationship with his brothers, especially with Rob. But there's still that nagging feeling that he doesn't belong and that there's no real future for him here. Mm -hmm.